All right. Well, welcome, you guys. Thanks for joining us to our goal setting webinar. I'm really excited to share with you some of my goal setting tips. And Sarah's going to share some awesome tips with us as well about how to set smart goals. We're going to share a little bit about our stories and just have fun setting goals together tonight. It's going to be really fun. Um, if you don't already have this um, printable for my goals for a super life, then shoot me a quick message or comment below if you're watching the recording and I'll make sure that you get that so that you can fill out your form and um, we can set some awesome goals for 2017. I am super excited. Me too. Yay! I know Caitlin's excited too, right girl? Yeah. yeah sorry, I had to mute the phone because my kids are loud. <laughs> That's okay. No worries. We probably won't um, ask you many questions again until the end. So if okay. you no okay. worries, go for it. All right, so I'm just going to share the screen and um, pull our little slideshow up. Okay. Let's see, start from the beginning. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So do you see the big one? Yes. And then our little faces? Okay, cool. All right. So I will just start out by introducing myself and telling you a little bit about my family story. So we have been health and fitness coaches for about four and a half years now, and I do this for my family. Um, we really started just with a focus on ourselves and our family, and then from there we've been able to branch out and help hundreds of other people. Um, but the reason why I started doing this was because of my husband. Um, as you can see, his transformation is really amazing. He at one point got up to about 300 pounds and was just feeling really miserable with himself. Um, it's easy for me to pinpoint the things that he didn't like about his body. But at the exact same time, I was dealing with a lot in my life, things that I was really unhappy with that weren't necessarily physical things, but I was suffering from depression big time. Um, I had major anxiety and PTSD from an emergency C-section and just a really scary, scary birth situation with our second, my little Jackson. Um, and I was just really struggling day to day. Things were really hard for me. I had no goals. I had no vision for my future. I was just really living day to day. And financially, we were living month to month and really struggling. Um, and my husband and my dad actually ran into, uh, well, not ran into, but saw an infomercial in the middle of the night for P90X, and so my dad ordered it, and at that time, we actually had moved from Texas to move in with my parents. We um, were like $10,000 in debt, we had a business venture gone wrong, and we had to completely shift our life at that time. So we were actually living with my parents. My dad ordered the workout program in the middle of the night. He was having a midlife crisis at that time, and my husband, as you can tell, you know, back then he was super overweight. And so my dad invited him to work out with him. And together, they got really healthy together. My husband lost 85 pounds total since then, um, doing workout programs and eating really healthy, just focusing on healthy habits and really great nutrition. And it's interesting because... Um, if you can see the before and after picture, it's really obvious the physical transformation that he had. That's really easy to see. But what I noticed as his wife is the more internal stuff. I noticed that he became so much happier with himself. And so our relationship improved probably just because he was more self-confident. Self and so he treated himself better. He treated me better. We were happier. Um, he was a better father because he came home from work and he had energy for the kids. He was excited to, you know, come home and take them to the park and play around with them. And we did like fun obstacle course things. And, you know, it's just a major contrast to the many months where he would come home from work and just have no energy. And so he would sit on the couch and that was, you know, what we got out of him from the rest of the day. And so as I watched his physical transformation, I noticed the internal transformation too. And the as he changed on the outside, he changed on the inside. He became so much happier. We became a closer family and life is just so much better. And that really started our family's transformation. 
It was his one decision to get healthier. Definitely worked at it consistently every day. Um, and now our family is so much healthier. And so because of that experience that I had, I now want to pay it forward to other people and I want to help them to have that same transformation. Um, it starts with our external bodies, but it goes so much deeper. And so I'm really thankful that I was able to experience this so firsthand because now that's my mission in life is to help other families get that too. So as we're setting goals, it's important to try to visualize where you are now and where you want to go. So imagine two islands separated from each other. So you've got Island A. Island A is where you are right now. I can go back to that time and completely explain what my life was like back then before we had a healthier life and before we were setting any kind of goals. So I would get up in the morning. I was not excited to start the day. I had really low energy. I had no motivation to get anything done. Um, and I would end the day with pretty much that same mindset. Now, Island B for me was this hope for the future, that we would be able to afford the things that we needed, to have a little extra spending money for the things that we wanted, the good things in life, as my husband and I call them, um, that I would have enough energy throughout the day to play with my kids, to enjoy everything that I had to do, all the, you know, mommy tasks that can get so mundane, but enjoy them because I just was loving life. And I knew that that was out there for me. I knew that there was some kind of a path where I could, I could get that. I just didn't know how. And so after witnessing my husband's transformation, um, that was about when I was pregnant with our third baby. And, um, after I had her, I got back to that point where I was feeling some postpartum depression coming on. And I just knew that I could not get stuck in that rut anymore. And I needed to be intentional about making changes in my life so that I didn't get back to that horrible mindset that I was in um, three years before. And so that's when I started working out and eating healthy and I was inspired by my husband's transformation and I was able to receive my own too. And so Island B for me is where I am right now. I love my life so much. I wake up every day just like excited to do everything that I need to do. And I have that energy that I always dreamed of. And now I'm able to give that to other people, which is really amazing. And I think knowing what your why and your purpose is, makes life so much more exciting and so much happier. So I love this quote, um, direction is more important than speed. So many people are going nowhere fast. And so that's what we're gonna be doing tonight. We're gonna give you your direction so that you can set these goals tonight and know exactly where you wanna go and then map out a plan for how you're gonna get there. And I don't want us to get overwhelmed tonight. This is not about feeling like Island B is something that we can step on tomorrow. This is going to be a year journey for us. And so as long as we just know what direction we want to head in, we're going to be okay. And it's just, the, you know, slow and steady wins the race every time. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. So I'm just going to go through these quickly because I don't want this to just be me talking all the time. I really want us to be able to share what our goals are too. But as we set our goals, we really have to be intentional about the choices that we're making. And I just know that personal growth doesn't accidentally happen to us. We are never going to wake up the next day and just realize that you're happier, that you're healthier, that you have grown, that you have more leadership skills. We have to work at those things. And so I've learned that if I can plan my day ahead of time, I am way more productive. I don't lose random pockets of time just because I don't know what I'm doing or I don't, you know, have a plan. So planning things ahead of time is really, really important. Um, I like to plan in power hour segments because that gives me a good chunk of time where I'm um, being conscious, not only about what time it is, but I also like that kind of need for like a end time, right? And so if I have an hour and I know I've got to clean out my front room in an hour before the kids get home, I'm going to be a lot more productive than if I have three hours to do it, but I don't really have to hurry. So that helps me a lot. Um, knowing your habits and knowing what changes you need to make are really important. And as we set these goals tonight, you're going to kind of think, okay, what do I need to do? What am I going to have to overcome? Um, and then 
getting up 20 minutes early makes a big difference for me. Now, Sarah was telling me the other day that her kids get up at like 4.30 or 5. They get up at 5, right? So getting up 20 minutes early or 30 minutes early would be like getting up at 4.30 and she's like not interested. <laughs> so we've talked about how you can do some of these things at night, but I recently read the book, The Miracle Morning. And he talks about some key things to be doing every morning. And so I started doing those things. Um, I actually now get up 45 minutes before my boys do. And I have that special quiet time for myself. And I set the intentions for the day. And I give myself that time in the morning to do a lot of the things that are on my goal setting list every day. I'm able to accomplish a lot of that in the morning or at least get my day started right. Um, and then the next thing is to invest in yourself. And sometimes you really do have to be willing to spend time on bettering yourself through reading something uplifting. Um, sometimes we need to invest in ourself, ourselves with a little money on some kind of a program that's going to help us. And then the last thing is to cut the crap out of your life. Just get rid of that extra stuff that isn't moving you closer to your goals. Netflix, <laughs> watching shows. Um, browsing Facebook. I even work my business on Facebook, but I have to be careful that I'm not wasting time on Facebook, just browsing and, you know, doing things that aren't adding any value to, to me or to my business. So don't be afraid and be willing to get rid of some of the crap stuff in your life that isn't helping you and isn't serving you and isn't bringing you closer to your goals. Okay, so now Sarah's going to talk about SMART goals and, and share a little bit of her story as well. Uh, I'll start with my story first. Um, so the picture on the left is me after having my second baby, and I didn't gain nearly as much as I did the first time. First time with Emma, I gained um, probably over 70 pounds, and with Alexa, the second one, I gained closer to 60, so it's, I mean... They're still very close, like 10 pounds apart, but I just remember being so miserable and I honestly did not share with any, with that picture with anyone and just till last week, I think. That was the first time I shared that picture. So um, I was horrified when I saw them. Um, so then I decided to set goals to decide, I decided to start working towards, um, a healthier life and losing weight. And so the picture on the top right is me last year. So a year after the previous picture and I, um, I felt better. I was looking better and I was happier. And then the picture on the bottom right is me this, this year. So I'm much happier. I'm more confident. I've reached my goals, I'm setting new goals, and I am just happier overall. So um, I didn't just wake up and say, well, I did wake up and say, I'm going to lose 70 pounds or 60 pounds, but I knew that I couldn't accomplish that in one sitting. I had to be smart about my goals. So um, when you're setting goals, you have to um, make specific ones. Like, for example, you can't just say, I want to I want to be more fit or I want to work out more or I want to have I want to be financially free but what does that mean do you want to pay off your debt do you want to lose 20 pounds do you want to work out six days a week so you have to set specific goals not just random ones if that makes sense does that make sense first totally makes sense okay so then the M in SMART is measurable. Your goals have to be measurable. You, you have, just like I said before, you have to, um, you have to put um, some kind of measurement on it, whether it's a, a monetary value or a weight value or a workout value. I want to work out five days a week for 30 minutes at a time, or I'm going to, I want to lose five pounds this month, something like that. And the A in SMART stands for attainable. So your goals have to be something that you can accomplish because if you set goals that are not attainable, you're going to get frustrated and you're going to quit and you're never going to reach those goals. So you need to set, in my case, what I did is I did it in 10 pound increments. I want to lose 10 pounds at a time. And so that's what I did. And every time I lost that 10 pounds, I, I gave myself um, a reward and I didn't make it food because Food is not a reward, it's 
just part of life. We have to have food to survive. So I just made small goals for myself, 10 pounds at a time. And I rewarded myself for every time I reached that goal. Your goals have to be relevant. That's the R in SMART. So basically your why. Why, are you, why do you want to have these goals? Why do you want to reach these goals? For me, it was I was unhappy. I needed to, I needed to get healthy for me. And then it was, I needed to get healthy for my family so that I could be around to watch my girls grow up and to watch them get married and have babies. I wanted to be around for all that. So that, that's my why. And then your goals need to be time, time bound. That's the T in SMART. So again, like I said, I set small goals for myself. I want to lose 10 pounds in 30 days, or I want to lose 15 pounds in 45 days. You have to put a time limit on yourself that way you are striving to reach something because if you just say oh by the end of the year that's not really I feel like that's too much of a, a time gap like you have to really set specific time goals awesome thank you Sarah sure okay so the next thing we're gonna do is go through um, the goal setting sheet and we are just gonna go category by category so we've got all these different areas of our lives to work on. So family goals, social goals, personal development. So that's more like the personal growth goals, um, career goals, financial goals, spiritual goals, and physical goals. And then there's another box that says, when I feel like giving up, I will tell myself. And this is a really important category. And it's important to have this all written out because we're going to hit stumbling blocks. And points where we are discouraged, where we might not have hit that goal that we set by a certain date. And a lot of times we just want to throw in the towel and walk away and just give up because it's easier, right? When we're frustrated, it's easier to just stop. Um, but that doesn't make this journey worth it you know, if we're just going to walk away. And so what I have down for when I feel like giving up, I will tell myself, don't give up. There will always be struggles and setbacks, but if you will push through them, you will learn valuable lessons and become stronger because of these experiences. You are worth it. And honestly, like I can think of all the stumbling blocks that happened this past year and flip it and think of something that I learned out of each one of those struggles and each one of those failures. And so I'm actually thankful for the, the times that I fail because there's some kind of a lesson that I can learn out of that. And then at the very bottom, there's an opportunity for you to write out your why. And this is huge too. This is like the driving force behind why are you doing this? And so like I shared with you, it was my family. My family is my why. But I have written down inner peace, daily freedom, happiness feel close to my savior, productivity. I want to wake up every morning started excited to start the day. I want to feel like I'm making a difference for my family and an impact on others. I want to be productive and work smarter, not harder. I want to feel prepared, not scared. I will take time for myself when needed. So you can actually take your why and get some affirmations out of those. You can get statements like, I will, I am. I, I um, am going to or whatever, just those kinds of statements so that you can turn that into some sort of an action. So I'm just going to take this off of screen share and we'll just go through each little category. And if we want to just kind of share what we're thinking with each other, this will help um, the other viewers later when they're on to, you know, give them some ideas and some examples. So... Family goals. Sarah, do you want to start with family goals or do you want me to start? I'll start. Um, okay, awesome. One that I can think of off the top of my head is to go on a family vacation mm. here without paying, without putting it on a credit card, which is what we've done in the past. Oh. So that's kind of like financial family all together in one. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I'll share one, and then Caitlin, if you want to share one, that'd be great. Um, one okay. of my family goals is to read with my kids every day. My oldest is nine now, 
and he has dyslexia. And so ever since he was like in kindergarten, it was a goal for me. I mean, even younger, I read to him all the time, but it became even more important for me to um, take that time to read to him. And it was, honestly, it's been one of those amazing lessons in my life of the small things that add up to a big change. So reading with my kids every day is a big goal that I have that is one that I can always check myself. Like, am I, you know, am I spending the time with them? Cause I feel like that's quality time with the kids, but then it's also something that I can do to help him, you know, learn and with school and everything too. Caitlin, do you want to share something? Yeah, sure. So for me, um, I think probably my top family goal would be to pray together as a family. Oh, more. that's a good one. Do you find it better in the mornings or in the evening? Uh, for us, it would probably be evening. Um, yeah. It would probably be more so me and the boys. My husband works away from home for extended periods of time. So, um, But I think the boys, they're both, I mean, there's three and one and a half but I think the three-year-old concentrates better in the evening, like before bedtime, basically. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a great goal. Um, I have another one, date night with my husband twice a month. <laughs> Love it. It's a fun one, but it's also important for us. Like, we need that time together. Yeah. So I have that down, too. Any other family goals we want to share with you? I'm going to add that. That's a good one. Then Oh, I also have been struggling with to sit down together as a family for dinner. Like how simple that is, but I tend to, like I'll stand in the kitchen and I'll eat or I'll let them go eat on the couch or my husband won't be home yet. And so having that family time together as a family, we're actually sitting at the table and eating. I need to be better about that. Um, and then another one I have down is family nights every week. And so we have like one night dedicated to have some kind of a family lesson, whether it's on like kindness or forgiveness, or we'll read the scriptures together or just something where we're, we're together, we're learning something. And then we usually do a game or some kind of an activity together. And of course the favorite part is the treat at the end. <laughs> so fun. It is fun. And we all look forward to it. I need to be better about doing that every week, though. Okay, cool. Any other family goals? Okay, social goals. Social goals are fun ones. These sometimes push us out of our comfort zone. Um, with my business, it's about getting to know people and building relationships and friendships. And so it's important for me to come out of my little introverted bubble and introduce myself more often and get to know people and the friendships that I've made have been just amazing. So that's something that is harder for me to do, but the payoff is well worth it because I've made so many amazing friends just by pushing myself outside of my comfort zone more. That's a good one. That's a hard one for me. <laughs> Talking to people? No, just social goals. Like, I yeah. have a, it's easy for me to talk to people. That's why I'm like, I feel. I know, that's why I laugh, because Sarah is like queen of, hi, <laughs> what's your name? I'm Sarah. <laughs> She's so bubbly and happy. That's why I'm like, wait, what's a social goal? Because I feel like I do this every day anyway. <laughs> you do. So maybe you just need to put a, a number on it. Like, how many new people are you going to meet each week? That sort of thing. I don't know. And one other thing that I have written down is to be present at school, to walk on campus instead of do the drive through um, volunteer, you know, help out in the class, help out with fundraisings, help out with school, with um, sports teams, and to, you know, really be looking at people when I'm walking by and to just create conversations. Another fun one. I actually have three here because I've done this for the past three years. So I'm looking over like my past ones. Another one um, that I have is find someone to help each week. 
That's been a good one. And I don't mean like help them where I get something out of it, but like go out of my way to make a double batch of dinner and take it to a neighbor or oh call God. a friend and say, hey, can I have your kids over on Wednesday for a play date? Someone that I know is stressed and needs a break. Um, doing something like that where I'm actually serving them and not getting anything out of it has helped me make more friends and just be a, a better person friend you know I like that I'm like writing that down add that to the list that's a good one I think maybe another one is to reconnect with with old friends that maybe I have like let slip through the cracks over time yeah Okay, so personal development. This is a fun one. I love personal development. It helps me so much just putting those good thoughts into my brain. I think sometimes we like the negativity overpowers anything positive. It just it just does naturally. So I love putting good things into my my body and my mind. Um, so I'm working on trying to read or listen to some kind of an uplifting book for 10 to 15 minutes every day. Um, and then reading a new book each month. And I love doing this with our team and just kind of having like a, a book club. So like every month we've been reading a different book. I don't think we did it last month at all, but we do have it on the schedule for January um, to share what we're reading. So it's kind of like a book club, except we're all reading different books. And then we're sharing a little, little tidbits from whatever book we've been reading with everyone else. And that's been kind of fun. It's so fun. I, I have that on my goal sheet as well to read one new book a month. So I have to, I think I'm going to pick one of my two because I'm currently, actually I'm in the middle of three books. Oh, that's hard. A fun book and then two mm -hmm. PD books. So I'm going to just pick one. That's a good idea. Because otherwise I get confused. Yeah. And then you don't feel like you're finishing anything. It's like a lot of unfinished projects. So that's a good idea. I just put, well, I put a couple things. I put similar things to what you guys said, but then also um, to step out of my comfort zone at least once a month. Mm. I, I'm extremely introverted and extremely shy to the point where it's like I won't leave my house other than grocery shopping or the necessity. So to force myself to do something like that every month. That's a good idea. And do you plan it ahead of time or does it usually happen like on a whim? I've never done this before, so we'll find out. <laughs> Yay! It's You'll have to one. share with That's awesome. You have to share with us what you ended up doing this month. Okay. Yeah. I, I love that. I'll figure that. that out. I'll let you guys know. Yeah. Um, I have to go put the boys to bed, so okay. I'm going to jump off the call. Okay. Sounds good. I'll send you the recording so okay. that you have it for later. Perfect. Bye, Bye Caitlin. Thank you. Bye, Caitlin. Bye. Bye. Um, and then I also have taking it one step further and sharing that book, like with a live video or a webinar, um, just so that I'm putting out what I take in. As I like that. I'm going to do that too. Share my book. Bye. There you go. Awesome. Career goals. Career goals are fun. So we don't have some kind of a career or a job where you're setting goals and have milestones in your business, then you could do this inside your home. Um, so whatever you think of with career goals, if you, you know, if your job, your main job is mom and housewife, then you could totally fill up obviously three things in that category with just inside the home easily. So, um, one of my goals for my mommy job is to spend an hour a day cleaning. And Sarah, do you want to tell them your Monday through Saturday thing? I love it. Yes, yeah. Monday through Friday so that you don't have to clean house on the weekend because typically that's what happens to me. Like if I don't do this power hour every single day, then I'm stuck cleaning my entire house, five bedrooms, three bathrooms, 2,100 square feet. And it literally takes me an entire day. If I do it all in one day, it literally takes me from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. to clean my entire house. So and then nothing else happens. 
right. you know, your kids get ignored, right? right. Exactly. <laughs> so my friend Leslie told me about this amazing cleaning schedule and I've been doing it and it only takes me an hour a day, Monday through Friday. So Monday is messy Monday. So whatever things you have left out on the counter or spread around the house, laundry that didn't quite make it to the proper bedrooms or towels didn't get to put away or whatever it is, pick it up, put it away. That's messy Monday. Tuesday is um, toilet Tuesday. So that doesn't mean just the toilets. I mean, you could if you had like 10 bathrooms, I guess. <laughs> take you an hour to clean all your just your toilets but no that means your bathrooms your entire bathroom so shower toilet sinks mirrors countertops floors done you could see your floors for another day I'll get into that later but for me I just do the whole entire bathroom all three of them on Tuesday in one hour done Wednesday is wipe down Wednesday so this is when I um, dust all my furniture, wipe down kitchen counters, wipe down um, the stove, the microwave, those kinds of things that don't necessarily get done every day. My furniture for sure doesn't. Mm -hmm. so that's wipe down Wednesday. Thursday is not really a fun name. It's just floors Thursday. <laughs> so this is like your kitchen floor, your rugs, your carpets, any, any flooring gets cleaned on Thursday. And again, that should only take about an hour depending on your house. Mm -hmm. And then Friday, my friend calls it Financial Friday, so she does all of her financial, um, like, accounting stuff, like, make sure that her her bank account is is balanced and all that stuff, but my husband takes care of all that stuff, so I call Friday Flex Friday or Free Friday, so anything that you didn't quite get to um, Monday through Thursday, you can pick it up Friday, or if you're all done, guess what? You get a free day. Yay! So it's like totally something to look forward to at the end of the week. Like, okay, I can work one hour every day, Monday through Thursday, and then I have Friday off. I love that. Yeah, so I love I've it. taken everything that you have shared with me back a few months ago, and I do throw it out Thursday. Yes, I love that. floor Friday. And so every week I'm trying to find something to get rid of. So I've been cleaning out closets. Um, I've been minimizing toys. I started back in like... I think it was the beginning of summer that we first started talking about this. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Um, and that's been so nice. Like, I just feel so much lighter without all that extra stuff. Yeah, and, like, you found a whole other room to have your office in. I know. this. So this used to be our playroom, and it just had toys everywhere, and it was never clean. And I had just accepted that it would never be clean because it was the playroom. Well, I had a desk in my daughter, my four-year-old daughter's room, just because I had half an office in there, half an office in the front room. I was able to combine that, bring that into this the playroom, which is now the office, and then I have minimized a lot of the toys, and everything fits in my kids' rooms. That's amazing. It's, I feel like we got a whole new room in our home. Like, that's how it feels. So that was a huge thing that happened this past year that I didn't – actually, you know what? I was going to say I didn't have it on my, my goal sheet, but I did. I've had add on to house or shop for a bigger house for the past three years. And? So I feel like – that happened. Yeah. Like a different yeah, way. Add on. Yeah. Because I've always wanted an office and somehow we got that, you know? Just cool. It's cool how that all happens. It's just, check it off. Once you write down your goals and you believe in them and you work towards them, they happen. You know, it's mm -hmm. cool. Really cool. It's really cool. So, other career goals. If you are into coaching, I know we're going to have a lot of coaches be watching this too because we've shared this with our teams. Um, we have rank goals. We have monthly, weekly income goals. Um, I have goals to help my coaches advance in rank and then leadership ladder goals. So there's a ton of different goals um, in the Beachbody world to look at. Um, and then you can just apply this to your own business or career. All right, so financial goals. I have two things marked off in the past. So pay off debt. We paid off all of our debt and then earn a thousand a month. That was, that was my goal for a long time. And, um, I was able to check that off and now I'm working towards a thousand a week. Like it's cool. That's rad. And it's exciting. So financial goals is where you're really going to want to put numbers down. I know sometimes we're hesitant too, especially because we don't want to sound greedy. Um, but seriously, there is enough money in this world. There is enough success in this world. Why don't you and your family deserve it? You do. 
So don't be afraid to write those things down and put a number down and believe in it and visualize in it and work towards it every single day. So my, one of mine is to pay off debt as well. Mm -hmm. um, we try really hard not to use our credit cards, but Christmas happens, vacation happens. And it's like, those are things that we want. We don't need them. Yeah. And we're just so quick to just swipe it. Yeah. So, um, we want to pay off our debt probably by the middle of the year. So that's like me. Yeah. So so write down how much your debt is and what date you want to have it paid off by. Okay. And then if that's your goal by the middle of the year, you can probably have a savings amount that you want to have saved up by the end of the year. Yes, and that was another thing I was going to get to. So um, before last year ended, what my sister-in-law told me this really great thing that she does. So um, our husbands get paid weekly. So she takes out $20 from every paycheck mm. and puts it in an envelope. And so that's $80 a month. If there's four weeks in a month and some weeks there's five, there's some yeah, months five five paychecks. hundred dollars. Nice. So we're going to start doing that. So we're going to take $20 out of every paycheck. And then by the end of the year, we'll not have only paid off our debt, but we'll also have cash to pay for all of our Christmas presents for our entire family. What an awesome idea. And the credit cards will be paid off. We won't have to use them again. Yeah. They'll be there for emergency. Yeah. So half will be for, because um, uh, I'm going to start saving too. I'm going to start taking money out of my, my paychecks too. That's great. So have money for Christmas next year and also for vacation. So wow. that we don't have vacation on credit cards anymore either. Oh, that's an awesome idea. And think about like $20. That doesn't even seem like a lot, but that's going to add up. Yeah, you're not going to even really familiar. notice it. Amazing. That's a cool idea. I love that. And also, we have made an eating out budget of only $200 a month because we've gone way over that in previous months. And like, we're like, where's all our money going? And then you look, oh, how many times yeah. did you go to dinner? Yeah. So we've set a, a limit and that's it. Once we've reached it, even if it's by the the third day of the month. Too bad. No more eating out. That's awesome. That's cutting the crap. Yep, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Cool. I love that. So my big scary goal for the year is to move into a bigger house. Yay! It's crazy. And I think like when, um, you have goals like that, that gives you the butterfly and your stomach like does a flip. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> because it means that you're, it's going to be pushing you. Yeah. So, and it, it was my goal last year too, but that's okay. It didn't happen last year. So it's going to happen this year. You know, it's, it's all right. If we, if the time bound goals don't happen right on time because we know the direction we're heading in. So we'll get there. Okay, so spiritual goals. I love, love, love setting spiritual goals. So I have reading my scriptures every day. Um, that family night that I was talking about before, we integrate some scripture study in there as well. And so that's working on our, our spiritual development as well. Um, and then taking things one step further and sharing that with other people. Um, I have had one more thing. Oh, so I also have started to do a morning daily devotional. There's apps all over the place where you can get them to download. It's like one scripture and some kind of a message and a quote, and then just kind of sit in that intention throughout the day. Now, Sarah, I know you're not super spiritual. And so we had talked about um, more being in tune with yourself on that deeper level like meditating have you been doing any kind of meditation um no but what i do like to do and i don't have one handy is i have a um a grown-up coloring book mm -hmm. and colored pencils so i'll just put on like relaxing music and just like veg while i'm coloring and it really helps to just kind of like relax my brain and like just think about me and what I need 
Yeah. Really helps. And also, like you said, we're not spiritual, but um, just to be able, just to spend more time with our, with my family, just to like really have that, like you talked about sitting down at the dinner table and enjoying each other's company and just having more time like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So could you do an amount of time either once a day or a couple times a week where you're doing your coloring book, you're listening to music, and you're getting into that deeper zone of intentional thinking? Yeah, I think, you know, like 10, 15 minutes a day is is perfect. Yeah. I listen to personal development, too, while I'm doing it. Totally. So yeah. I can two birds, one stone. Yeah. Well, and I think either or, I think the what would come out of the music would be that it's your thoughts happening. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things with meditation. And I've done some guided meditation before. And you want to get to that point where you're, you're thinking, but you're not forcing yourself to think. So those thoughts are still going to come. A lot of people think when you're meditating, you, your mind is blank. But that doesn't happen because you're always going to have those subconscious thoughts. So mm-hmm. you're just allowing those thoughts to just flow in a really natural way and then you can recognize what those thoughts are and put them into action later. Yeah, and I can journal it too while I'm calling. I can just jot down. Yes. My friend was just telling me about a journal that she was doing bullet journaling and she said she got all the ideas on Pinterest, so I think we should all look that up. Yes. But it's bullet pointing your whole day. So whether it's shopping list, whether it's what uh, you need to get done, whether it's thoughts that you've had or um, things, impressions that you've had or um, ideas that other people have given you. And she just, she writes, she does like a pretty title like Monday and then she's using different colored pens anyway. So bullet journaling. So that might be another thing that, that you would love to. Cool. Yeah. All right. Our last category is physical goals. And as health and fitness coaches, this is our favorite. (laughs) It's our favorite to help people with. Um, So I have, this is my old one was workout three to five times a week, but I just started a new program this morning called Body Beast and it's a bulk up program and I have to commit to six days a week. So that's stretching me, but I know I'm going to get a lot out of it. So I am willing to put that work into it. What's your number? Um, mine is five days. I think five is a reasonable goal for me to work out mm-hmm. five days a week. And um, I'd actually like to really do six because I am trying to train for a half marathon. Oh. So I'd like to get at least two days of running and then four days of weight lifting or weight training because that's what I love. Yeah. So that's really, I really should, it should be six for me. All right. Write it down. That's so funny. That's like my biggest hesitation. I love, I love the three days a week. It works really well for me, but I know that that's what I need to do. So, um, okay. So we've got our workouts, uh, nutrition. What are we going to do for healthy meals? and staying on task with our nutrition? Uh, I'm going to meal prep every Sunday. That, and that means going through my pantry because we've had a um, bad habit of just going to the store and just buying whatever and not really knowing what we had and didn't have. So we'd have like more than we needed of one thing and not enough of another thing. So really just planning out my meals um, and also like preparing my food on Sunday night for like Monday through Friday, like breakfast, lunch, and snack so that it's ready to go. Cause if I don't have it ready to go, I make bad choices. Yep. Me too. That's totally on my list too. plan out healthy meals. I have Monday through Thursday just because Friday night is usually our date night. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm okay with my weekends being a little bit more flexible and we're kind of spontaneous people. Um, but if we write down our Monday through Thursday, Friday, you know, and then Friday breakfast and lunch, we can do leftovers and then whatever happens Friday night. Let me be honest. (laughs) The weekend is kind of crazy for us too. We're more flexible on the weekend. Yeah. And I think, I think we need that. That's the 80, 20, right? Is allowing yourself that, that flexibility and to have treats, not necessarily calling it a cheat to where you're going to feel guilty about it, but you're treating yourself, especially if we're going to be putting the work in with our exercises, you deserve that treat on the weekend. Right. So, 
Um, yeah. And then I have being involved in our challenge group. So making sure that I'm posting, that I'm responding to everyone, I'm interacting in our groups and giving everyone that sense of community that is so needed. We need to give that support to each other and I need it too. So yeah, I need it too. Um, my physical goal is to lose my last 12 pounds, 12 pounds. That's it. Wow, that's so exciting, Sarah. Thanks. So 12 pounds. Do you have a date? Um, I said the first day of spring. So that was like March something. Yeah. I want to say it's like the 22nd or something. I think it's usually the 20 something March. Of course it doesn't say. Let's say by St. Patrick's Day, Friday, March 17th. Okay. I love that. 12 pounds. I, I don't have a number um, to lose. I actually want to gain right now. I want to gain muscle mass big time. So my number is how many times I will be working out. And that's how I'm going to get my results. I'll give you some of mine. I know. Send it over. I need it. Sarah is so buff. <laughs> Wait. I want to see those muscles. Look at that. My goodness. Yeah, I need some of that. That's what I'm working on. But that one picture that you showed in the very beginning, I was like, dang, Kirstie's buff. What were you I'm doing? In the turbo fire tank? Yes. Oh, that was a long time ago. I feel like, I think that was like two and a half years ago or something. What were you doing back then? You don't know, huh? You don't remember? I, yeah. Uh, actually, I was probably doing... P90X3. Yeah, you were like, your right here was all just like, just wait. Give me 90 days. Oh, you got this. So overwhelming. 90 days, I'm going to be a new woman. <laughs> you look amazing, but I know I have faith in you. You will do it. You will do body beast, and you are going to be like, man, look at these muscles. Thank you. I'm excited. It'll I'm be fun. It'll be fun. All right, cool. So we've We've done the last, I shared my last two categories. Do you have yours written down from before that you want to share with everyone that when I feel like giving up in your why? No, but my why, why I do this is um, when I first started, it was for me. It was all about me. I was selfish. I had no motivation. I wasn't happy. I was miserable. I mean, you name it. I, that was probably on my list of just any um, word you can think of to describe unhappy. So originally it was for me and then it was for my family because I want to be around for as long as I can. I want to be healthy for my family. Um, and then I took it one step further and I want to do this for my friends and for my family. I want other people to feel as good as I feel and want everyone else to know that they can do it too. That's awesome. I love that, that your why like spread, you know, it started with you and that's not selfish because one, when you are in a state where you're happy, then you can help other people. Right. You know, cause at the beginning of this, none of us could help other people. We needed to work on ourselves first. So that really is how it all starts. It starts with yourself and then you can kind of move on to your family and then your closest friends. And then now we're helping people who we didn't even know last year, you know, it's cool. Yeah, that's true. So that's amazing. So next week, we have a five-day New Year, New You jumpstart. Ooh. We are going to create a private Facebook group. It's going to be Monday through Friday starting the 16th. And we're going to give you tons of tips. So the first day is going to be time management. So you've got these goals set. Now how are we going to manage our time, right? How are we going to get this done? So time management. Day two is affirmations and setting daily intentions. We're going to work on getting up a little bit earlier or staying up, not necessarily even staying up later, but dedicating some time every day to tell yourself your affirmation. And then the third day is how to stress less and find more joy out of life because we've got to enjoy this journey on the way. It's not all about work. It's about enjoying life mm -hmm. and having fun along the way and learning these things. Um, the next day is meal prep and healthy planning because that we all need that. And then the last day is consistency for long-term success. So we're not going to just give you five days and say good riddance. <laughs> we're going to help equip you with the tools that you need for success all year long. So cool. I'm really excited. So that starts Monday. So reach out to your coach or whoever invited you tonight. Um, if you want to join that 
and it's totally a free group. It's just a really fun group. We're going to help each other. We're going to post these tips and we're going to help you jumpstart an amazing year in 2017. So I'm really excited. I'm excited too. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Sarah, for doing yeah, thanks you. Thank you, Kirstie. Yeah, that was super fun. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and please share your goals with us. We want to hear them, right, Sarah? Yes. Share, share, share. All right. Sounds good. Bye, guys. Bye.